Hey, this is Jason Burns. I am here with Clint Roberts. Clint, thank you for making the time to chat today. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Much Your new album, Rose Songs, you know, I just have to say, it just feels like it's a, a really sort of welcome uh, in the storm that is 2020 and 2021. It's just, it's just so nice and mellow. And I think it takes you to a place that we all need to be right now. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, uh, I, I hope that you at least to a few people, the record can offer some, if only momentary solace, uh, you know, in, in, yeah, in these trying times. What, what was it for you to be, to have this focus during these trying times? Was it a, a great distraction to be able to say, okay, I can step outside of all that's going on and just kind of focus creatively on this? Yeah, it was, it was kind of surreal because, um, it just kind of came at the right time. I uh, carry on who is the label that helped me put the record together. Um, they found me, you know, a, a month or two before going into the pandemic. Um, and then it just so happened, you know, uh, once the pandemic was in full swing around March of last year, mm -hmm. um, I, they had a, you know, a, a record deal offer for me, which, you know, felt very surreal at the time yeah. because, um, you know, virtually no one else that I know of, at least in my peer group, was getting, you know, getting any offers like that. And so I, and so get, it was, it was, it's a privilege to get to work on the record, but it was also sort of, it was like, you know, kind of a godsend and uh, definitely kept my spirits higher than they would have been in, in the year 2020 when I was working on it. Um, but, and, you know, now I'm just very excited to release it and, and uh, kind of make my debut uh, as an artist. Mm. Is it, um, you know, is it kind of surreal also to, to have this big moment in your life and not be able to celebrate it in a way that you probably would have, would we not be in where we're at right now as a, as a society with the, with the pandemic? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is sort of, it's, it, my, it's banana. I mean, it's just so wild that my, it, you know, it, my music's relatively getting much more attention than it's ever had. Um, and then the traditional avenues that you, you know, normally engage with that are completely unavailable at the moment. So that is sort of, I know that, you know, regardless to how long my career as an artist is, I know that down, you know, many years from now, I'll look at this moment and be like, that is, you know, that's just one of those, that's one of those permanent, like those things that I'm always going to remember is that, 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 you know, I got my start as during, you know, a time when, you know, there is no live music. So, yeah, yeah which is not something I would have predicted ever. Um, but I'm, I'm very grateful for it. You know, you know, whatever, like whatever the conditions are, I'm just grateful to, to have the opportunity that I do. Nice. So, you know, as you sort of look at your personal life, where does Rose Songs fall on your sort of timeline of, of accomplishments? Where do you see it in your life outside of your musical career, but just as sort of personal accomplishments for yourself? I mean, I would say it's definitely in the getting this record out is definitely in my top five sort of landmark moments in my life you know i mean there's various maybe maybe not maybe they're not all co coming of age checkpoints but there's various just like points in your life where you you kind of realize that from that point on you know the future is defined by that moment that you had and i think and i and i think the this is like yeah this is very much so up there i i've i have put out records before um, I have not put out records that are nearly as professional as this one, um, you know, and, and I, you know, carry on kind of discovered me for, for the records that I had put out before. Mm -hmm. um, and this record is sort of, you know, it's a curation of, I would say a lot of my best songs over the years. Um, I'm 26 years old. Some of these songs were written when I was 19. Wow. Um, and some of these songs were as written as recently as well being 26. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, you know, there's definitely different, I stand by all the songs that are on it, but it, there's, yeah, it is sort of a collection of my work thus far. It's a collection of my work, you know, without, 
my, all of my work before this defining moment of being associated with a label and then, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully having an infrastructure to try to grow within. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. yeah. So for you as an artist, it's a bit like a, a compilation of who you are over the span of a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, it totally is. Um, I think, uh, you know, there's, it, it, it has, it's sort of, yeah, it's a curation of sort of a lot of the themes that I like to write to, which is, you know, um, I, I guess some of the most prominent themes on the record are sort of like themes that have to do with love that isn't necessarily working out, uh, or or maybe it would work out if just some circumstance stuff, you know, some circumstances are different. And then there's other themes, um, you know, more existential themes on the record. Um, and I'm trying to remember, uh, there's, a, you know, there's some, there's some spite on it. It's definitely, I like to, I, when I, when I put out a record, I really, you know, I, I appreciate to see when artists can do concept albums, but I kind of like to pick and choose from different emotional palettes and, mm -hmm. and put them into, or, or, you know, different thematic palettes that aren't necessarily, I like, I like a record where no two songs sound the same and, or, or similar, I should say. And I like records where, you know, maybe each song is sort of its own little, own little packaged version of a, a specific feeling or, or, or vibe, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, and, um, if that answers your question, yeah. I'm sorry. No, the, it, you know, you had mentioned the, the surrealness of the process. Yeah, um, putting it together. I'm curious what that process has done for you as a songwriter moving forward. What was this last year like, you know, putting this record together that is impacting your songwriting now? That's a good question. Um, I think I, I, I'm, I would say that I, like going forward with future songs to be released, I, I think we did a fantastic job um, on the production end, but I, but there wasn't any pre-production that was done for this record. Um, and I think moving forward, I'll probably just in the interest of kind of streamlining, uh, making more efficient use of everybody's efforts. I may probably, I'll probably try to record, get proper recordings of my own written songs that, you know, I've done in my free time, um, kind of like, you know, with a digital audio workstation and a virtual instrument or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and, you know, just trying to hash out because I we went into the studio and I had I had I had pretty defined ideas as to I had pretty defined ideas as to how each song sounded. Um, that being said, a lot of it had never been tinkered with with this sort of trial and error. Um, well, especially if you said you know, some of them have been written since you were 19, they, they probably had a lot of absence in between them too, right? In terms of being tinker, tinkered with. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. I mean, some of those songs when I wrote when I was that young, I kind of, I heard the arrangement in my head before I, they had never been set to any sort of recording. I had never made a full band arrangement, but I was fortunate enough that I had kind of conceptualized what the song was about and what the, what the, what the instrument should do long enough that it there weren't there wasn't a whole lot of guessing and there wasn't a whole lot of uh, there, once we got to the studio there wasn't really a whole lot of guessing with most songs there's only one or two songs where we sort of had to kind of experiment more than I would have initially anticipated mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah so I so anyway you know moving forward I would like to try to approach songwriting you know, with some pre-production in mind and then inherently, I guess, at some level, become a little bit more experienced of a producer, get a little bit more competent with drums, bass, and keys so that I kind of know what I want from those instruments before mm -hmm. I, before, you know, before we're trying to go in and knock the ball, you know, knock the top off the ball, yeah. I'd like to kind of have um, a lot of the guesswork taken out. Um, but, you know, and but also at the same time, you don't want to have such a rigid idea of what your songs should be before you go into the studio. You shouldn't have such a rigid idea that you don't allow them to 
change into something maybe better than what you initially conceived. So that it's there's definitely a line. To, right. There's a fine line to straddle there. Because um, because but, magic comes out yeah. of spontaneity too, right? Exactly right. Well, I mean, it is all ultimately like all of the magic comes out of spontaneity. The like I think, and then you know, it's sort of it's up to our more analytical minds or more uh, I guess discerning minds to sort of you know start nip and tucking. You know, I think that's what that what's that's what a lot of songwriting is about. Mm. Um, yeah, and that's, and that's the part that we, the audience, don't see. We just think it's all magic, right? You know, we don't see the nip and tuck. Yeah, well, and sometimes, I mean, some people write some magical songs under some, you know, some without without ever having to do much. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly, nip and tucking. Um, but and some people, you know, sometimes you can have these sort of like streams of consciousness, uh, streams of the unconsciousness, rather, uh, manifested into consciousness and like poured into a song and people, you know, you, you can have amazing songs that way. Um, I think anyone who does that is very fortunate, who does that every time they write a song is very fortunate for me, you know, I, there definitely is, you know, there's a lot of massaging on the back end to, uh, to the song as to how, how the structure is and what it's, what's, what it's really saying and kind of, trying to take a magnifying glass to it. And I'm these days I'm trying to do less of that because that can be, it can be, it can make writing a lot of songs kind of difficult if you're if you're trying to lay a perfect brick every mm -hmm. time. Um, if so so to speak, um, like in regards to each line of the song. But that being said, you know, I've I've kind of learned to trust that my sort of more um I guess the, that I've learned to trust that in my ability to handle handle the more mechanical process as well, um, but but it, it ideally is not mostly mechanical processes. It's always going to be at some level. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, on, on the other side of that, Clint, the the listener, what do you think is sort of the ultimate way for somebody to enjoy Rose songs? How do you envision somebody, you know, taking the album and absorbing it? Oh, that's a good question. I hadn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is this where, I mean, that's who I, I would say, I mean, I, I kind of, I've always been, I don't, I don't know if there's a specific setting um, that I, I, I expect people to, or I would want people to listen to it. Cause I think different songs are going to speak to different speak, speak to, I, I, I think, each song on it has the capacity to speak to a given person, but I would say that I, it, it would surprise me if um, someone was in a setting in that moment where the spectrum of things that are going on on the record are, um, you know, are, are like, I would, I would think that a lot of people take away, you know, a few given songs, like, and not even specific ones. I just think, I think with the, with the different flavors on it, I think mm -hmm. like, okay, this is the part of the record that I think that would fit, you know, the listener if they're in this kind of context or this kind yeah. of headspace. Um, but, Clint, don't forget, some people like their scoops of ice cream with vanilla and chocolate and strawberry. Well, well that's, that's the idea. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I, think, I, I think of it, I mean, like I, uh, I would say that it's definitely a record you can sit down and listen to it. I would hope people sit down and listen to it in, in its entirety. Um, it wouldn't surprise me. I, like, it's always funny. Like with my previous record attempts, someone always has one song that they're like, I love every song, but this song. Mm -hmm. And like, that's in, in, you know, I, I prefer it more when people focus on the positive aspect, yep. but I, it, it wouldn't surprise me if like, what I like about it when people tell me that is that it's always a different song, meaning that different parts of the different parts of the record speak to them. And I, I don't know, I, I'm always fascinated to hear what like what engages one person, one person versus another. But anyway, well, um, that's the beauty of music is that something can mean something to me and mean something different to you and different to somebody else. And we we find what we need to find in songs sometimes. Exactly. Oh, totally right. And that's why I like, um, as, much, as much as I try not to, I try to as little as I can talk about what, like, where I was when I was, you know, people ask about the meaning of a given song. Mm -hmm. And at the risk of maybe sounding pretentious, I prefer people take a take away that. I mean, I, I just prefer that 
you know, people make their own meaning out of it because I have a meaning. And, you know, a lot of the so lyrics aren't so deeply metaphorical that, you know, you, I, a lot of the songs, you kind of know what they're about when you hear them, at least mm -hmm. subject matter wise. But as far as like how people interpret individual lines, I, you know, I would, I would hope to tr I would try to, I try to keep as uninvolved in telling people what I was thinking when I wrote a line mm -hmm. um, for that very reason. Yeah, um, it, yeah. it's I, I love that because then that's like, I don't know if you remember Mad Libs, but it takes the person to fill in the blanks. And that's some that's where the magic comes on our side, the listener side. Exactly right. Yeah, exactly right. And it's, you know, I each person's individual sort of uh, personal interpretation of the song is much more important than me telling them like, oh, like the idea of telling somebody that they've interpreted something about the song wrong is sort mm. of like... Yeah, it's sort it of like kind of, of it. it takes them away from the song. Pulls them. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't tell anybody yeah. that. So, so, yeah. You know, finally, Clint, I know that the ukulele was your sort of gateway instrument. Yes. If you not pick that up, would you be here today? Would would you, would music be a part of your life? Uh, I don't think. It, I I mean, it's hard to say. I know that I had. I have the musical impulse before the ukulele. Um, frankly, I had a teacher that didn't have. So like I to, to clarify, I tried picking up guitar in middle school and emphasis on tried because I had a teacher who instead of teaching me basics first, the, the teacher asked me, what song do you want to learn? And so I was like, I, I listed some, I think I listed, yeah, it was Gallows Pole by Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. um, not knowing like I, as somebody who was a beginner i didn't know yeah <laughs> what i didn't know what i didn't know yeah and as the teacher he should have known that that's you know starting with a song as opposed to here's a strumming pattern and here's some chords mm -hmm. uh you know what i've been i i probably would have started playing an instrument instrument much so sooner at least a stringed one um but um i would say sorry i've got a very loud intersection i don't know if that's coming <laughs> through um the I would say that, yeah, my interest in the ukulele is definitely the reason why I am where I am today. I mean, it was sort of, uh, yeah, it was the gateway instrument to, to instrument. I, you know, I think ukulele is very much so a serious instrument. Like you can write some good, I mean, you can write a good song on any yeah. instrument that you can put, you know, tones to. Um, but that being said, you know, I, I think like, Moving to guitar allowed me to make some music that had a little bit less specific of a tonality, if you will. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, so like, yeah, I'm very, but I'm very grateful that ukulele came around because it was so, so much, it was such a, an approachable instrument relative to the instruments that I ultimately ended up playing, which is mostly banjo and guitar. Um, and those, you know, pilot, pilot hole of instruments for me, if you, if you will. Yep. Yeah, you know, Clint, what is the best way for people in, in this strange, continuous time still to connect with you and Rose songs until they can get out and see you perform live around the country? Well, um, yeah, a great way to I, I would say the you know, luckily the record's going to be out on all the streaming platforms, and then there's definitely physical copies. We intend to make some final down the road. Um, everything's a little delayed on that front but as to stay in touch with what i'm doing um if you follow me on any of the social media platforms you know where i'm on tiktok uh facebook instagram uh and twitter mm -hmm. um you can keep updated with what i'm doing um i i'm trying to get a couple of stream shows together nice. um, with the full band if i can help it just to promote the record um as to when that'll happen i haven't locked down a date because i'm i'm uh i've got some new bandmates that are joining and we're kind of getting up to speed with them mm -hmm. um but yeah if you just follow me on instagram or any of the other social media platforms you can you can keep up with what i'm doing and yeah i i, I appreciate you guys tuning in i appreciate you having me on jason Awesome. Clint, thank you so much for being here and for giving us some of your afternoon. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah, awesome. wonderful. Thank you, Trunk Space. Yeah. Take care. Take care. Thank you so much.